Hi, this is Sonia Doucette. In this video, I'll show you how to calculate the solubility of a compound when a complex ion is present. So a complex ion is different from a common ion. The problem that we're going to solve is calculate the solubility of silver chloride in 2.0 molar cyanide solution. So the first thing you want to do here is write the balanced equations that show the dissociation of silver chloride and also how it will interact with the cyanide ion in order to figure out what's going on. So silver chloride solid will dissociate in solution to give you a silver cation and a chloride anion. Now the way that silver chloride will interact with the cyanide solution is that it will form a complex ion called silver um, that involves silver and cyanide. So this ion is called disyanosilverate. So instead of repeating that name again and again, I'm just going to refer to this substance as the complex ion. So what will happen to that in solution is that it will dissociate into a silver cation and two cyanide anions. So those are the two equations describing what would be going on in this solution in terms of reactions and dissolutions. So qualitatively, you can see why silver chloride would be more soluble in a solution of 2.0 molar cyanide than it would be in a solution by itself. So let's think through this using Le Chatelier's principle qualitatively, and then we'll actually do some calculations to get a quantitative look at what's going on and why the solubility of silver chloride is increased. So the common ion here is the silver. So what happens is when silver chloride dissolves, it gives you the silver ion. But when you have cyanide present in solution, that cyanide will bond with the silver to give you the complex ion. So when that happens, some silver is removed from solution via the second reaction here. So that means that more of this silver will be put back into the solution. So that means more of the silver chloride is going to dissolve. So that is how things work qualitatively in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. So to look at the solubility of silver chloride in this solution of cyanide ions more quantitatively, the first thing you want to do is write the balanced equation for the dissolution of silver chloride in this solution. So you have silver chloride solid interacting with two cyanide ions to give you that complex ion plus chloride ion. And this will have a subscript of aqueous as well. So the next thing you want to do is define concentrations in terms of x. So x is going to equal the solubility in moles per liter of silver chloride solid. So this is the uh, moles per liter that will dissolve. x is also equal to the moles per liter of that complex ion that will be present in a saturated solution. X is also equal to the moles per liter of chloride ion. And th they're all equal to X because we have this kind of one to one to one molar ratio here when we look at the balanced equation in the stoichiometry. The final thing we need to think about is how many 
moles per liter of the cyanide ion will we get? Well, there's two things going on here before we can answer that question. The first thing you have to realize is that you start with 2.0 molar or 2.0 moles per liter of that cyanide ion. We're given that as part of the problem. The other thing you need to realize is that you're going to lose 2x moles per liter when the reaction occurs. So this is 2x rather than x because cyanide has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2 in the balanced equation. So to write this all out, the solubility is going to be 2.0 minus 2x. So that's the concentration for the cyanide ion in terms of x. Now that we have that, we can think about substituting all these concentrations in terms of x into the, the k expression, or the equilibrium expression. So let's write that out first. For this specific case, we have k is equal to products over reactants. So we'll have that complex ion multiplied by the concentration of chloride divided by the concentration of cyanide. So we have all of these three concentrations in terms of x. So if we can substitute all of those in, we can solve for x. But we also need to know k. So in this case, you need to find a k for this specific reaction. So you might be able to look this up somewhere, or you could determine it yourself experimentally. But let's just say in this case that k is going to equal 4.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So that's the k for this equation. So now we can start substituting in our numbers into the, into the equilibrium equation. So k is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 4, and that's going to be equal to x, which is the moles per liter of the complex ion, times x, which is the moles per liter of chloride, divided by the moles per liter of cyanide, which we've defined as 2.0 minus 2x, and this term is going to be squared. So what we can do to start solving this, the first thing we can do is take the square root of both sides. So when we do that, what we're going to be left with is 0 0.02049 is equal to x divided by 2.0 minus 2x. And then to further solve, we'll be moving on to say 2.0 minus 2x multiplied by 0 0.02049 is equal to x. Multiply out the parentheses, 0 0.04099 minus 0.04099x is equal to x. When you move x to the other side of the equation to get both x's on the same side, you're going to be left with 0 0.04099 is equal to 1.04099x because you're adding 1x plus 0.04099x. And then when you solve for x, you get a value of 0 0.03938. So the answer to this question is that the solubility of silver chloride in this solution is going to be equal to x, because this is how we've defined solubility of silver chloride. It's equal to x moles per liter. So we've already we've just solved for x, so all we need to do is round that to significant figures. And the solubility of silver chloride, we can say, is 0 0.039 molar. So that's our answer.